Hi guys, I'm Lillian. And I'm Felipe. We are the Postmodern Family. We are Americans living in the UK searching for Great Britain. What does that mean? It means we're looking for the greatness of Britain. Uh, we make three new videos every week and we would love it if you subscribe to our channel. In this episode, we're going to react to a Yes Minster episode in which the civil servant explains why the UK entered the EU. So this was before the EU existed, when it was just the EEC. Uh-huh. The European Economic Union. No, Council. Council. Yeah. Okay. The, the wine Mountain. lake and the milk ocean. I think that's um, a play on something. It's not real. Okay. All right. So but supposedly they're fighting over rights to these things. I think so, yeah. Okay. The so. lamb war. Who's him? He's a minister of parliament. He's an MP. And who are, who's this guy? He's a civil servant. Okay. Civil servant. Mm. Bit ticking. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what pass the parcel is, right? Yeah. Now that we've game. been here now. Yeah, yeah. But it's a bomb. Yeah. So you don't want to open it. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid that the identity card bill is planned to be the last action of this department. Wonderful ammunition for the anti-Europeans. Yes, let the Foreign Office realize what damage this will do to the European idea. Well, I'm sure they do. That's why they support it. Surely the Foreign Office is pro-Europe, isn't it? Yes and no. <laughs> if you'll forgive the expression. The Foreign Office is pro-Europe because it is really anti-Europe. What? The civil service was united in its desire to make sure that the common market didn't work. That's why we went into it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Minister, Britain has had the same foreign policy objective for at least the last 500 years. To create a disunited Europe. In that cause, we have fought with the Dutch against the Spanish, with the Germans against the French, with the French and Italians against the Germans, and with the French against the Germans and Italians. Divide and rule, you see. Why should we change now, when it's worked so well? <laughs> Ancient history, surely. Yes, and current policy. We had to break the whole thing up, so we had to get inside. We tried to break it up from the outside, but that wouldn't work. Now that we're inside, we can make a complete pig's breakfast of the whole thing. <laughs> Wait, I don't get it. <laughs> Divide and conquer, I understand. So he's mm. saying that the Brits specifically wanted mm. to divide and conquer Europe. Is mm -hmm. that what he's saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, but then, but this, this move is still a part of the breaking up then. Is that what he's saying? Doing mm -hmm. the whole EU thing. Is going into it so you can destroy it from within. Ah... Interesting. Let's see where this goes. Friends against the French, the French against the Italians, the Italians against the Dutch. The Foreign Office is terribly pleased. It's just like old times. <laughs> Surely we're all committed to the European ideal. Really, Minister? <laughs> <laughs> not. Why are we pressing for an increase in the membership? Well, for the same reason. It's just like the United Nations, in fact. The more members it has, the more arguments it can stir up, the more futile and impotent it becomes. Appalling cynicism. Yes. We call it diplomacy, Minister. <laughs> hey. So That's it. So I don't know about the truth or falsehood of that. But it does but look it like sense. it could be real. Like mm -hmm. But then let's say let's say that was the plan. Okay, so mm -hmm. now From the beginning. From the beginning. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to now where now we're trying to get out. We're doing Brexit, right? Yeah, forty years later, we're leaving from the now, making of have this video. We, have we infiltrated it enough to destroy it from within, do you think? If that was the plan that they had. Well, if you think about it, if the UK, which it will, successfully leaves the EU, it has set the precedent and it has given the blueprint for how to leave the EU. Mm -hmm. And that has inspired other people for, uh, to agitate for leaving. So mm -hmm. Poland is quite strongly agitating to leave. Um, Italy, apparently, there's a strong agitation to leave. Okay. So within every country now that has stirred up, don't know how big or small these groups are, mm -hmm. but um, a portion of the population within EU members... Um, are stirring up to leave the EU. Now, before this was developed, was, wasn't it divided anyway? So why unite it to divide it, if that makes sense? Was Europe I'm not sure what united? 
No. It was never united. Mm -mm. So then how is it any different now? If if we want to break them out of the EU. Just to get them to hate each other more? Before this EEC was introduced. Mm Mm-hmm. European countries were their own countries ruling themselves independently. There was no Mm -hmm. coalition, right? Mm -hmm. Where they decide things together. Right. So before that, they Mm -hmm. were divided. Why unite them to divide them again? I don't get it. If you listen to the Civil Servant, he said they tried to destroy it from outside and it didn't work. So, so there was, was a movement created... there was a movement okay. to unite Europe outside the UK. The UK ah. tried to thwart it. It ah. didn't work, so they joined it to thwart it from within. I get it. I get yeah. it. Okay. So the EEC didn't originally have the UK in it. No. Oh, so when mm-hmm. the UK joined then it turned into the EU. Maybe. No. Okay. So no. they joined the EEC. It was still the EEC and, and then, then it eventually morphed into the EU. I see. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then now I see if they leave, mm-hmm. if we leave if the UK mm-hmm. leaves, then yeah, it could break up the EU. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. Okay, interesting. It doesn't. It, I almost thought that he had the the motivation to infiltrate and like take over. You know how like the conquering ideal. Um, but no, no it but wasn't the U- conquering. Yeah, no, the just... Brits have never operated in a sort of in uh, invade and then rule. Mm. They've always been sort of commercial interests um, get them into a country Mm -hmm. and then their commercial interest in those countries demand that they be protected with an army or soldiers of some sort. And then they, as they operate in that country, they keep different tribes divided and different groups divided so that they are the de facto um, overlords. But, um, But once the people... So yeah, that, that's one model. Sorry, that's one model of the way the British have operated. But it's always been on the back of commercial interests. They never mm-hmm. wanted to rule for ruling sake. Mm-hmm. Um, they only wanted to rule for commercial interests. Right. But if so we, there's if... no real commercial vested interest in ruling Europe. Oh, I see. Okay. No obvious one, at least, mm-hmm. it seems to me. But they want to weaken the, the bond that the European nations have with each other. Because why? Countries have always fought against each other. The French have always had, is the historic enemy of the UK. The Germans have fought against the UK. The Russians have fought against the UK, I think. The Germans, uh, the, the Dutch have fought against the UK. So if you have all these separate countries that the UK has fought against at some point in time, Uniting. and they, they unite, uh, then that is a tougher enemy. I see. So it's just to keep the enemies weak. Maybe. I wouldn't call them enemies, but to keep the potential for a stronger enemy in the future. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't call them current enemies. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Down the line, if they become an enemy, then they would be strong. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what's the takeaway then for today from this? What have well, you in learned? retrospect, it, it almost looks like the, it, it's true. I don't know if they, they wrote it in jest or... Just a clever weaving together of centuries of British history and the current situation of that time. Mm-hmm. But um, based on the referendum, though, it, of 2016, I don't, it seems like there are people who are genuinely interested in being in the EU. Mm. Yeah. I just don't know if the, the, um, the elite who really rule the country, whether they had plotted this and planned it. The whole way. It just seems like it happened so that this left agenda of pushing non-binary gender and a lot of other things that are, are going on going socially, <laughs> that it also seems to be tied with immigration mm. policy, open borders. Like It seems like the people who are pro, I don't know, like destroying the family, mm-hmm. the traditional family, yeah. that they also happen to be... Are globalists as well? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And that's weird. That's just... Maybe it's coincidental, but I think that plays no. into. It why stems from we have a common, so many... a common uh, principle, which is that they detest the heritage of the West. Hmm. So, what better way to destroy it than to destroy the family and to admit an alien culture? that would never integrate into that culture. But like the people that I know that knowingly 
that they, they, they don't knowingly what you just said. They mm. honestly and truly believe that open borders is the most Christ-like way to approach society, that we should always be welcoming mm. um, immigrants. Mm. And I, I don't think that they think, oh, I want this because I it destroys the family. I think that's a, a slice of a slice of people that isn't to the demographic. You really think that most people they are They wouldn't knowingly... infer Christ. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. But they, but they, they infer it as like they spit it back at the faces mm. of Christians who believe who maybe are pro Brexit or pro um, stronger borders. Okay. Um, so they, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that they themselves are like, oh, I want to be like Christ, so I'm gonna blah blah blah. They're saying, how mm. dare you believe mm. in strengthening borders or building the wall, and therefore, uh, you must hate, mm -hmm. you must be racist. You must hate immigrants, mm. and that mm -hmm. that the highest moral person would accept them, would would not have borders. Okay, so first point was that you say the people who are for the destru the erosion of the family are the same people who want open borders, and then I said it's from a common idea. You said, but the people I know who are for open borders wouldn't espouse that common idea mm -hmm. explicitly. Mm -hmm. Okay, because there's know. because there's two groups of people. There's the people who are have the idea and want to propagate that mm -hmm. idea, and then there are the useful idiots who mm -hmm. latch on to the idea in some way, but way downstream from its core. But it seems like these useful idiots are the ones mm. who have voted. I know, but to that's what that's what Stalin cry. that's what Stalin has called them the useful idiots. They're the people who listen to the socialistic message of. We're for the common men. We're for the poor men. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and they latch on to that, but they don't realize that communism as such is a system built to hand all the reins of power into an even narrower and smaller group mm -hmm. of elite men mm -hmm. who therefore have no check and therefore are more likely to abuse and mm -hmm. become tyrants. So all they hear is love thy neighbor, mm -hmm. be kind, etc. They latch on to that. And they're not deep thinking enough to realize that that is just a bait and switch, mm. that that really isn't what these people, the, the originators of the idea wanted. The originators of the idea just want tyrannical control. Mm -hmm. I think more and more people are realizing what... Um, what so what you might forgive results. them for naively just okay. attaching themselves to the... But once that again, they seem to be like the loudest ones crying out there, like, mm. you know, the snowflakes that are mm. screaming and things like that. That's but, just lack of depth. Mm, anyway, and yeah. based on the most recent vote, mm. though, it mm. does seem like more people are becoming more aware. What vote? The general election? Um, yes, the general election. Okay. That a lot of people who normally vote Labour ended up voting Conservative because they just didn't want open... They didn't want socialism. Um, well, see, so that's... That's very speculative. I think the ticket item for the general election was whether Brexit should be executed or not. Mm -hmm. And so the people overwhelmingly voted, in my view, that Brexit should be executed. I wouldn't read into it as a rebuke towards Jeremy Corbyn's socialism. Well, the, necessarily. the party themselves said that. They blamed it on Jeremy and his socialism. Yeah, but... Who cares what people claim or don't claim? So My, they're saying the voters. I think the voters chose... It didn't help that Corbyn was hopelessly incompetent, anti-Semitic, and um, hard left. Mm -hmm. That didn't help. But I wouldn't read the election as a 100% rebuke of socialism or even open borders Maybe not. or even anything like that. What I, it was... What I'm, saying, what I'm, I'm not mm. saying about socialism as much as I'm talking about this, the Brexit vote. So you took the referendum, compare it to the general election, and there were people from the Labour Party who said mm. that they voted Conservative because they're for Brexit. Exactly. Though they are Labour. That's right. So like I said, the ticket item was Brexit. Mm -hmm. Now, for those Labour voters who voted Conservative, um, it may or may not be that they are not for immigration. I know many people in my office who said, I'm a labor voter, but it's not right that Brexit is being thwarted. I lost. I've, I mean, I, I'm a remain voter, but it's not right that Brexit is being stopped. It was a, 
a democratic well, election. Well, Jeremy Corbyn didn't say he was going to stop it. He did. He said he was neutral. But that's basically saying it's not... That, that's... It, people read through that. Okay. Jeremy Corbyn was... Basically, he was going to go wherever the winds went. That's what he was saying. Yeah, but okay. I, I don't know. Really, these, these people who voted to remain then went ahead and turned around and voted for, for the Conservative Party? I think some because... elements of that because they said, we're tired. We're tired of this ongoing dread deadlock in Parliament. Three years now since the referendum mm -hmm. and nothing's happened. And you guys all just bick bicker and bicker and bicker. Um, it's not right to thwart the 2016 results. So the only just solution is to vote in a majority that will bring about Brexit. That's interesting because I, I, I think I just have a different um, Set pool of, of people because they would say mm -hmm. they would say that the referendum results were incorrect and that the people who voted. But for those Brexit are all the Remain voters were... who continue to vote Tory in in 2020, 2019. It would be different. You there's no way you would have a Tory voter of 2019 saying I voted Remain and Remain. Is the right answer oh yeah you wouldn't okay. flip the other way no, you know? no way so the people all the people universally who voted tory in 2019 wanted brexit i mean the majority the vast majority 99 percent, i would say are for brexit mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. period and that was the but then item. i'm talking about the remainers so then so I, I would the remainers who voted labor in 2019 Yes, they would say labor. Sh I mean, remain should have won in twenty sixteen. Yeah, and, that's and we should remain, remain in twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I actually I the stronger people. remain voting party would have been Lib Dems. Mm -hmm. The Lib Dems came out and said we're going to thwart mm -hmm. Brexit. We're going to cancel and Brexit. They did horribly. And yeah, they, they, so that just again. Lib Dem and UKIP. UKIP did even worse. UKIP was the Brexit one though, right? Let's not get confused. Let's oh, just okay. take it one thing at a time. Right. <laughs> so yeah, Lib Dems who were on their ticket item was oppose Brexit, 100% reverse it. Jo what was her name? Joe Swinson. Joe Swinson lost her seat. The worst performance of Lib Dems in ever in history. So that just goes to show that the mood of the country was get Brexit done, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't read into that. Okay, that was a rebuke of socialism. That was a rebuke of globalism, all those other ancillary mm -hmm. issues. Okay. So you think that there are a lot of Brexit voters that are still possibly for open borders? Um, no. I think there are a lot of people who voted Tory in 2019 who are for who are not for completely closed borders. Okay. Hmm. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below on other things that we should react to and we would love to read your comments. If you really like what we do, you can buy some of our merchandise. So we sell music, for example. Lillian has put out a couple, three albums. One is Italian, one is French, and one is, most importantly, British patriotic music. So give them a listen and buy the album. Thanks for watching. Bye! Bye.